Hello from the island of Senja in northwestern Norway. I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick. Today I'm leaving Nordkap in the extreme north of Norway and heading through stunning countryside to Oxfjord Harbour for an overnight stop before driving onwards to Eresfjord at its famous golden toilet on the island of Senja. Good morning from Nordkap and what a different day it is to yesterday. If you saw that video it was 22-23 degrees last night where well, the weather changed in a flash around 10.30. The rain came in, there was a bit of a gale blowing. You can probably still just about hear it. We'll look outside when I can dare to do it. You might be wondering what I'm doing with my little gas stove, using it to boil my water instead of using uh, my regular stove. Well, I usually use the electric hob when I'm in a campsite and plugged into electricity to boil my water. But I try to minimize the amount of gas that I'm using. I have two color gas bottles in the gas locker, which is just outside this door and they're almost impossible to refill when you're on the road unless you're in the UK or Ireland. So that's the amount of gas that I have for my entire trip. Not only does the cooking run off that, you can run the heating off that or the fridge. I am running the fridge off it because I've got lots of food in there and I don't want it to spoil. Because I'm wild camping, I don't have the option of cooking anything on my little electrical hob. Happily before I left Ireland, I bought this little camping gas stove it cost about 18 pounds and it uses little gas canisters and if you shop very carefully in the UK somewhere like B&M you can pick those up for pretty cheap about a pound each and they look like this it looks like a regular little kind of canister like a hairspray or a big deodorant one or something they last surprisingly quite a long time and so I'm going to make some coffee and then we're getting back on the road but this time not for 11 hours <laughs> maybe for about four or five. Clearly I'm on a bit of a tilt, my attempt to make a little omelette. One of my favorite little breakfast hacks is a little quick omelette like that. Um, I've just taken this little tortilla wrap and I've warmed it over the gas. I'm gonna pop this in with a little bit of cheese and ham and that makes a really nice breakfast wrap. Easy and so quick. Let's get packed up. It's time to brave the wind. Flip. I can't even hold the door open. It's slightly breezy. I think it might be wise to get out of here pretty quickly because it's just so, so breezy. Let's try and get somewhere where it's, the weather is not quite as there goes the hat. Okay, I'm out of here. I don't recall ever experiencing a gale quite as bad as that. I suppose the only thing north of here is the Arctic. Whatever's coming in off the weather is not softened by hitting some other mountains first. It got really bad about 4 a.m. And I think a lot of other vans have taken off. Behind me was absolutely packed with maybe 50 vans. There's probably 10 still there. On this side, people are obviously enjoying their uh, gale front view. But what a difference from yesterday. It does verify for me that if I thought I was crazy, and I know I'm crazy, that driving here for over 11 hours yesterday was the right thing to do because I got to experience it in the sunshine. And in the Wild Atlantic Way season, which hopefully you've seen, and if not, here's a link. On, I, I didn't have any choice about what days I went to different places and sometimes the fog was so bad I couldn't see anything. So that's why I really wanted with Nordcap. This is a one-time deal for me. I'm not coming back here again. It's so far out of the way. I feel lucky to have gotten the footage that I got but it's not about footage, it's about experience. I don't have a strong plan for today. If I look at the map, there's a place called um, Burfjord, B-U-R, Fjord. And it seems to have a little parking spot for motorhomes that they don't charge you for, which Norway apparently is very good for. And, you know, like people coming to their communities and spending their money, which is a good idea. Time to hit the road, Jack. It is 8.08 a.m. Four or five hours would put me somewhere for around lunchtime. 
I've got a banana for a snack. Thank you, Mr. Banana. Okay, let's hit the road. Bye bye. I've just done an Instagram live. I'm never quite sure what to say in those circumstances, but it strikes me sometimes that I'm in these beautiful places and that it would be fun to share with people what it looks like. And I start doing that and then peter out after about a minute. Anyway, this is this beautiful harbor. So many harbors in Sweden and here in Norway are given over to motorhomes during the summer months, which makes eminent sense because they're not being used for boats. This one's very pretty, it's on a fjord, and it really is gorgeous. Good morning. Well, the camper's taking on some water because I'm gonna go wild camping later, I need a few litres in there just to keep hands clean and that kind of thing. Here's what's happening today. I'm in a place called Oxfjord. I had some questions as to where I was going to go next. Maybe to Lofoten. I pronounce it as Lofoten, but apparently it's Lofoten. Or Senja was recommended to me and it looks like I can make it to Senja in one day's drive of about five hours. So I'm going to go to Senja and try and pick up a ferry tomorrow to Lofoten. This will all make sense if you read my blog about this and there'll be an itinerary there. I just wanted to take a second to appreciate this view before I get on the road. The thing about driving through Norway is that you could stop literally anywhere and it's beautiful. So I'm going to appreciate this bit for now. I've been trying to pull off the road for about 20 miles, something like that. Every time I spotted a nice place, I was already past it. I'm coming right towards the end of this fjord, I think. I'm outside a town called Rom, R-O-M, along this beautiful fjord with the snow-capped mountains beyond. And I mean, it's just stunning. What a gorgeous day. And there's a real interesting green hue to the water. I just love it up here. This is one of the nicest places I've been to in the world. I'm driving through a town called Finnsnes, which is on my way to the island of Senja. This is the last big town before crossing over onto the island, and Finnsnes might be a great place for you to stock up on supplies. Now that I'm taking my own advice and pulling in at a shop, I'm not quite sure what I need. Probably vegetables. Maybe I just need to get over it, but I'm still not used to the prices that you have to pay in Norwegian supermarkets. I fancied a little bit of cheese. The smallest piece of brie was five pounds. I thought that's just outrageous. It's too expensive. So I bought a red pepper to try and vary things up a little bit. Little bag of mushrooms, so I can make a nice mushroom omelette, or both of those will go in a stir fry. And some cheapest chips, nacho chips, still two pounds, but the cheapest they had. I also bought water, and all of that together came to 10 pounds. I'm gonna head over that big bridge and head to Senja.
this mightn't be a very well-formed thought, but I have to tell you that I'm constantly astonished and surprised by this country of Norway. The first time that I came here, I really loved it, and I wasn't sure why, and I'm still not sure why, other than that, I love being out in nature, seeing different places, and I like places that aren't overcrowded, and of course, I'm a tourist who's overcrowding it a bit. There are giant horse flies, I have to tell you. I was coming around a corner, I very luckily found this little parking spot because I spotted this waterfall, and if we were in Iceland, there'd be steps up to it, it would be monetized in some way, and it's not. It's just there, because that's how it is. And then I spotted up here, another massive fly, the flies are massive here. They're like mice with wings. And then up here, I spotted another waterfall. So when I came around the corner, I wasn't expecting to see this stunning lake. Let me take just a few seconds of video with some music to express how I feel about it. Hello from inside the Arctic Circle in Norway. Yes, it's 30 degrees Celsius, low 80s Fahrenheit. I guess I'm still working out what it is that you might be interested in about what I'm doing with van life. And uh, I have to say, what I'm normally interested in is people's everyday life. So I've just pulled up at this very weird spot with the golden toilet at Eresfjord uh, on the island of Senja. It's so hot, it's over 30 degrees. I have no fan, I'm wild camping. And before this melts, I'm gonna make myself a cold drink. I think a small gin and tonic would be delicious. This is my last remaining bottle of gin. That tonic may have completely lost its fizz. But it hasn't completely lost its flavor. Refreshing. By the way, the flies here are ginormous. It means that everything has to be very, very carefully sealed. I've got fly screens on my windows. And if you've seen the earlier video, you'll know that this front window is broken. And I've managed to kind of fix it by sealing it with silicone but it means that i can't open it and that's going to be a pain in the neck in terms of keeping air moving happily the door does have a giant fly screen so hopefully a breath of air will come through it's not yet in case you don't know i do leave the back area made up as a bed if i'm not going to be using it as a dining space okay okay there might be some chance of getting some fresh air. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Plan and Patrick from here on the island of Senja in northern Norway. Who knew it was such a fantastic place to visit? If you haven't already, please subscribe for more of these wonderful places 
that I want to visit around the world. You can support me in my travels by becoming a Patreon. The address is down here. And you can follow live stories on Instagram at this is Planet Patrick. Until the next episode, take care. Bye bye. Thank you.